Arachnotech Golem is a technological horror born from the deranged imagination of the Archaeotech Sator Davos. It began its existence as a means for the Vansar to cheat death. This was in the centuries before the clan perfected their environment suits, and Davos dabbled in full cybernetica bodies as replacements for the failing flesh of his people. It is said that dead and dying Vansar architects were brought before the Golem, where they breathed their last upon its iron skin and gave over their fading engrams to the mechanical man. The theory was that they would live on as ghosts in the machine's spirit of the Golem, and the great minds of the Vansar might somehow be preserved. Like so many things devised by the architects, the Arachnotech Golem was both a great success and a great failure for the clan. Unfortunately for Davos and all who would come after him, the engramic coding imprinted in the Golem could never find purchase, and so the mind of the deceased would live on in the machine for a time before fading, meaning more dead and dying had to be brought before it so it might enjoy some semblance of life. Of course, even in this damaged state, the Golem found its place within the clan. Centuries later, the Arachnotech Golem is a tool of revenge. Its body has been added to over the years to make it a device of war, towering over most mortal hivers, its armoured torso held aloft on spider legs and armed with an assortment of archaeo-arcane weaponry created by some of the most powerful architects to have ever lived. Old Vansar gangs might petition the services of the Golem by offering up one of their brothers or sisters so the machine might absorb their engramic spirits for a time. Such a melding is not without its risks, however, and can leave the donor little more than a blithering idiot. Howdy folks and welcome back to Wallywood Wargaming. My name is Damon and this is the series where I give you bite-sized videos on every single agent and dramatis personae in the game of Necromunda. Now I have done a separate series on hired guns of 60, 60 videos worth, so if you haven't checked that out, do so. Uh, these are the agents though, in a separate series as the mechanics are slightly different when it comes to hiring agents in your games of Necromunda. Now I've done an introductory video as to how that all works, so do check out episode one in this series. We're now in episode three though with the Arachnotech Golem. I have to say, this is probably my favorite agent out of all of them, or well, certainly one of them anyway. Most of the agents are very, very unique and offer something different to your gangs and your games of Necromunda, I have to say. And the Arachnotech Golem is a Vansar agent here who is an absolute badass. Uh, the lore there is just awesome, I have to admit. Um, and I'd love to see a kit-bashed uh, model made for this guy. It's kind of I'm kind of disappointed that, the, that Forge World haven't got round to doing one of these yet, but they might do in future. Um, we can only hope, right? Uh, but the Arachnotech Golem uh, is just awesome in the game as well. We're going to have a look at the stats in a second, but first we'll just have a look at the petition results. So if you roll a d6 plus your rep for this guy, uh, on the lowest result, you get this guy for 50 credits, which is incredibly cheap for what he does. On a 9 to 15, you get him for 100 credits. So 50 credits and 100 credits respectively if you're going to hire him uh, in your general sort of agent mechanic. Um, now you can use these guys as outcast leaders as well, but in terms of the costing for it, that's where it becomes a little bit ambiguous. As I've mentioned in the last video for Ajax Gorgoth, um, do ask your arbitrator as how you might go about using these guys as leaders in outcast gangs. This one's a bit strange because there's some mechanics revolving around the use of this guy. Um, you know, you have to actually use a fighter to be the donor for this guy. And we might as well just look at that now quickly. So when you hire this guy, you use one of your fighters, even if they're in recovery, as the donor body for the Arachnotech Golem, which I think is just a fucking awesome piece of lore there. Um, it's really, really cool. Um, now, if you win the battle, uh, it's all good. If you lose the battle, though, the donor fighter loses their um, mental stats pretty much permanently. So they have a 12 plus leadership call, willpower and intelligence after that. So there's definitely a strong downside to it. However... Uh, I would generally probably use this guy on a juve or a subtech or something um, because you're not going to do it on your leader because, uh, you know, the uh, the frightening results of your leader having a 12-plus call and willpower and leadership and whatnot would be uh, pretty bad, I have to say. Uh, use it on a juve, though. That would be my uh, two cents on that. Of course, if you roll a 16-plus, then he doesn't help the gang at all, so he's, he's much more likely to help you if you've got um, lower rep, of course. 
Now let's look at the stats though. Of course, there's no model to talk about, which is a bit of a shame, but let's look at the stats. We have a movement of five, um, which is average, slightly better than most fans are though, I have to say. A weapon skill and ballistic skill of three plus. Strength and toughness of five, which is fantastic. Three wounds, initiative three up, and three attacks. Now, here's where it gets interesting, of course. The leadership, cool, willpower, intelligence all have question marks. Those are dependent on the donor fighter. So if you do use a subtech or whatever, it will have the mental stats of that subtech. If you use a champion, it will have the mental stats of that champion. Just remember the caveat to that of losing the battle and, uh, you know, having the 12 plus on those mental stats for that donor fighter there on would be pretty bad. Now, it has got some really unique weapons and kit as well. We've got the Histra Energy Projector, not to be confused with the Histra Shield. This one is a weapon, and it is a ranged weapon as well. It has an 8-inch short range and a 16-inch long range, similar to a shotgun with plus 1 to hit a short range there as well. However, it's strength 5, it's minus 1 AP, 1 damage, 3 plus ammo, and rapid fire 3 Rapid fire three at strength five and minus one AP. Reckless though, um, so you can shoot your own guys with it with, uh, I don't know what, nine shots. Uh, and shock as well though, so it's got shock. So there's auto hits on, on six, auto wound. Um, very, very, very dangerous weapon, I have to admit, and decent ammo there as well. So you're not going to want your own fighters around this guy when you go off with that weapon, that's for sure. But hugely, hugely destructive weapon there. And we've also got a shock claw as well for a close combat option. This has strength plus one, minus one AP, two damage, power and shock. So when you combine power and shock, those sixes auto wound and cause double damage and don't get a save and all sorts. It's very, very nasty indeed can only be uh, parried by other power weapons as well. Um, yeah, uh, what's not to like about that? Fantastic close combat weapon and a fantastic uh, ranged weapon there as well. Uh, in terms of the skills, you actually inherit the skills that the donor has as well, so that's worth considering too. So if you have got a juve that's been promoted a few times and you use that as the donor and they've got a few skills, dodge or whatever, um, then you get that on top of it. However, this guy also comes with catfall, clamber, cold and calculating, ment mental mastery and radfaged as well. So radfaged is where you gain flesh wounds from being submitted to rad, I believe. Mental mastery, I think, means that you can't be, uh, you're inured to insanity, which is pretty cool. Cold and calculating means that you, I believe you can use your intelligence stat instead of your cool stat or something like that, or willpower. Uh, but also catfall and clamber as well, meaning that you're much more agile going up buildings and whatnot and faster to do it too. Light carapace armor, a bio booster, and a respirator. So this guy really has got all the gear, I have to say. It's also worth mentioning that the Arachnitech Golem, also on top of the light carapace armor, gets a 5 plus invulnerable save as well, with a special rule called seemingly invulnerable, which is quite nice to add to everything else that this guy's got. Really interesting mechanics around using the donor fighter and stuff. I love, I love it all. Uh, there's nothing that I don't like about the Arachnitech Golem, um, and I think I'm I'm going to be, be playing a sort of Gene Stealer cult uh, infected Vansar gang soon. But I'd definitely like to use this guy in a couple of games in the campaign, maybe. But I definitely will be using it uh, as a juve as the donor fighter I think because it's just too much uh, of a problem not doing it. I quite like the idea of losing the battle and having a juve with twelve plus. Um, mental stats on everything it'll be quite funny but that's the Arachnitech Golem anyway let me know what you think about this guy whether you've used him in your games because I haven't yet but I certainly like to uh, unleash the Histra energy projector on someone uh, pretty soon it would be very fun indeed that's it for now anyway uh, and I will catch you in the next video peace out